Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back. And this is part two of a four-part video on this beautiful little walking beam steam engine. Now, this engine was gifted to me by Engine DIY Shop. Thank you to them. And it's made by Retrol. It's a very high-quality model. It is not really for small boys. And if you're interested in this, and it just runs great. Go ahead and uh, look down in the comment section where I have some links there to, to show you where to get one of these, what the price is, and there is a discount code, so be sure and check that out. Now hopefully most of you have watched part one, which is my tips number 960. You can look it up if you haven't seen that. And it's a fun kit to build. It's all pre-machined. There are some sub-assemblies. It only takes an hour or two to put together. So if you enjoy putting models together or something of that nature, this would be fun for you. And you can do it in your apartment or your rented house. You do not have to have a complete machine shop to do this. So this beautiful little engine is just about ready to operate, but the first thing I need to do is to lubricate all moving parts and you should do that before each and every session of running this or playing with it. Remember it's not for small children so you must supervise children because of the danger of fire and the alcohol and all of that hazardous stuff. So this is going to be fun. It's just so intricate. There's a lot of little moving parts and every one of those needs just a tiny little drop of oil. So let's do that first. Now there is nothing to lubricate on the boiler so we're just concentrating on the engine and let's start up here with the beam. Just a couple drops in there. One drop is enough. Same thing here. And then over here Remember, this is Watt's parallel motion linkage, and there's about six or eight little pivot points there, so make sure you get all of them. And I won't do all of those right now. Down here, you have another bearing here right on the crank. So, a drop, although this is all brass anyway. Now, there are ball bearings here on the main shaft, and I do not really know if they need lubrication, but I'm going to do it anyway. Remember that once you start running this, there'll be steam and water and all of that all over uh, these different parts that will wash away the oil and you do not want to run it dry. And then a couple drops here in the cylinder, which I have done before. Now, I don't really know if these tiny little linkages here in the governor need it but I'll do it anyway. So there's about what? One, two, just a lot of little points here of pivoting. And a couple drops on the gear couldn't hurt. and the valve and I think I got everything here I'll go back off camera and oil the rest of these linkages okay let's add water to the boiler so take off the little cap here remember that this is a pressure relief valve here so you can't not get too much pressure you're only running a few pounds but notice the little spring there this is pressure relief valve and there's a gasket there do not lose that now, I insist on using distilled water, so I absconded from my wife's closet, the Walmart distilled water. Why distilled? Because you're going to get all kinds of minerals and so on that will build up in the boiler and you can't get it out. So, I'm pouring some of this in my coffee cup and then you can use a funnel, but it's just a tiny little hole and I only want to fill this about halfway or less. If you put too much water in there, it takes a long time to heat up and there isn't enough room for the steam. It's nice to use warm water. I have not preheated this water, but it'll speed things up. So be sure and use an enema syringe. That's probably what works best for getting into that little hole. Do you know what I just discovered? That in 
forcing the water in here with the enema syringe, the, uh, there's no way for the air to get out. So I opened the valve and I opened the whistle and then the water went right in there without trying to come back out on me. And then looking at the sight glass here on the end, you can see that I'm at approximately one half full. Maybe almost too much in there. I might drain a little bit out. The nice thing about this engine is that with all the brass and stainless steel, you don't have to worry about corrosion or rusting on the outside. This is really a model or a toy for men, not so much boys. Now go ahead and tighten up the plug so that it can't leak. And I'm going to turn off the valve and close the whistle. And this will give you enough water to run it probably 10 or 15 minutes, which is long enough for a session of playing with this thing. Also, the amount of alcohol that will fit into the burner is probably about 10 minutes worth. Now, this is the dangerous part that I do not want children to play around with. And even as a full-grown man, do not do this on the living room floor where you've got carpeting or on a, uh, a dining room table with a nice tablecloth or anything like that and have a, a fire extinguisher or, or a fire blanket or something to, uh, to put a fire out should it start. Remember, alcohol is dangerous because you can't see the flame very well. Use denatured alcohol is probably the cheapest. Well, it's not cheap anymore, but it's easily available. But other kinds of alcohol will work. Remember that denatured alcohol is extremely poisonous. They poison it on purpose, you know, so <laughs> it's all about taxes. But uh, do not drink that or get it on your lips or anything like that. And I'm going to pour some of that in this coffee cup so that, again, I can use the baby size enema syringe. And we'll put some in the burner. That's about enough. And to put the burners back in place. Now remove all of your alcohol off of the table, whether it be in a container like this. I need to pour that back into the container. Get the container away from the flames and away from where you're working. All right, let's light the burners. You see, it's very hard to tell if there's a flame. Oh, but there is. So, without spilling any, under the boiler we go, into the firebox. Now, it's going to take a few minutes for this to heat up. I'll be right back. As the engine starts to heat up, and the steam first goes into the coal engine and all the other fittings, the steam will condense into water and it can be a mess. Now, there's a little pipe right here that I'm touching and it goes out the bottom here and they provided a little pan, stainless steel pan, to go under there to catch the, the uh, condensed water. So be sure and put that under in that location Especially if you're, you know, on the kitchen table or something, you don't want to mess. Double check to make sure that your burners are lit and there's a flame coming out of them. And you can feel the heat right about here radiating or rising from the firebox here. So it's been about three minutes and we're not quite ready. I do not see any kind of boiling or activity yet here. You'll see boiling in the sight glass when it is about ready. You can see there's just a little bit of boiling going on and I see a little bit of water dripping down into the condensation pan underneath. But I don't think it's quite ready to run yet. Now everything is hot. Be careful what you touch. Be sure and have a tube of ungentine on hand. Even the valve here is kind of hot. Not kind of, it's very hot. You see it boiling? And there it goes on first try. 
Now if you have water collecting in the bottom of the cylinder, you can drain it right here with this little cock. Look at how nicely that runs. Okay, it's several days later and I've been having fun with this. I run it quite a bit. You can see a little discoloration here on the stainless steel, but let's run it again and talk about the governor and a few other things about it. I have distilled water in there a little bit less than half. And one thing I wanted to point out here in regards to the, the burner, and I already have alcohol in here, it's very tricky to put it into the firebox here without spilling. So I like to do it in a manner like this. Lift up the back end like this and you can always keep the burner perfectly horizontal as you put it in there. Like that. And it's very critical how much wick you have sticking up. It's, I believe, hotter if you have it sticking up higher. Make sure that no alcohol spilled and you can light it like this. both wicks and put it into place and I'll be back in about five minutes when we're up to steam. We're starting to build steam. Now I don't know if you can hear, can you hear that? It's not real loud. They should have a plastic or a wood knob here. And you can see that we got a little activity here, meaning it's boiling. Let's see if it's ready to run. Oh yeah. It's virtually silent. I'm going to talk a lot about the governor in another video here, but what I've found that there isn't really a need to operate the little valve here. I've got it pretty wide open because the speed regulation will be done by the governor. You can see the, the balls moving out. I'll put just a little bit of load on it with my fingers and you can see the balls move in. Remember that this is a single acting beam engine. That is, we have steam pressure that pushes the piston up, but it's just going down by momentum of the flywheel. And look at the beautiful Watts parallel motion. I'll talk about that in another video as well. I've said this before, but you've got about 10 minutes of running time with half a boiler full of water and all the alcohol that that little burner will hold. And you can see the little valve moving back and forth. That's called a spool valve. You know, I already ruined one of the little belts got too hot and it, it hit the side of the firebox there and instantly ruined it. Fortunately they gave me a spare. Beautiful. Be sure and leave a comment in the comment section. What a beautiful engine! Did you know that steam power is still extremely important in this country and around the world? Big buildings are heated with steam quite often. 
And uh, a good part of our electricity is created with steam. 50% or more, all coal and gas-fired plants and all nuclear plants, when you get right down to it, they are creating steam. So a steam engine like this, of course, is archaic and uh, obsolete, but steam itself is going to work for you every day. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little lesson here on the uh, beam engine. Be sure and watch. We're, we're running out of fuel here, I think. And never run your boiler dry. I think we've said that several times. It runs real nice at slow speed, but I think it's going to peter out here because we're just about out of alcohol. Thank you for watching. Be sure to look down in the comments section for links and discounts on this beautiful item. And I'll see you in the next one where I talk about either the governor or the linkage. So this is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. Lots of still pictures. Leave a comment and a thumbs up if I deserve it. So long for now. I'm not sure I ever released the videos yet for this Miller Beam engine, but it's similar in design in some ways, but it's an electric boiler. Quite awesome as well. And I do particularly like beam engines for some reason.